the Great Revolt against the rule of the Summer Crown Baratheons started in the 27th year after Robert's landing. The Lords Mark Riswell, Ethan Glover, Mario Tumitis and Taganaro Seldoris all attempted to rid themselves of cruel King Oliver Baratheon in Myr. Oliver still had the support of two Lannisters, Joffrey Lannister, son of Jerrion in the west, and Lancel Lannister, son of Kevin in the east. But the rebels controlled a larger army than the Loyalists, and the war was an existential threat which could potentially end the Baratheon adventure in the east forever. The first battle of the war took place at Robert's Landing itself. Mario Tumitis, Magister of Tyrosh, had landed at the town with a large force, intending to seize its palisades and establish a defensible beachhead for his allies. He was confident in his superiority after the defeat of a Loyalist scouting party, but this was premature. Loyalist forces poured into Myr in the following weeks, and eventually King Oliver and his brother Cameron led an army almost double that of the Tyroshi to relieve Robert's Landing. Oliver, eager to prove himself to his remaining vessels as being equal to his brother in combat prowess, challenged Magister Morillo to a duel on the battlefield, but the Tyroshi fled. The Battle of Robert's Landing was a resounding victory for the Baratheons, and an auspicious sign. After the battle and the subsequent chase, the Loyalist army soon headed south, to the lands of Ethan Glover and Mark Riswell. Some minor castles were taken, but no major battles took place, before King Oliver's army was forced to head back north to relieve the capital. A large army, once again led by Magister Morillo of Tyrosh, was besieging Myr itself, and the Battle of Myr, the largest battle of the war, was once again a Baratheon victory. The king's younger brother, Cameron Baratheon, distinguished himself with his father's mighty warhammer, and some say he looked like Robert come again. Once Myr had been relieved, the royal army headed back south to retake more rebel castles. In the Battle of Messilosh, King Oliver finally saw a chance to make a name for himself. In the heat of combat, he encountered one of the rebel leaders, Ethan Glover, Dragon Hunt veteran, who had been made lord by Oliver's father after the Second Daughters' War. Regarded as a just and fair man, Lord Ethan had been paranoid about King Oliver's arbitrary whims and forced to pick the side of the rebels against his cruel king. Now Oliver met his foe in the field and the young king, skilled with a blade, found a weak spot in the 54-year-old Ethan's armor. One of the four leaders of the rebellion drowned in a pool of his own blood, nearly two years into the Great Revolt. The rebels, however, soon had their revenge. During the Second Battle of Messilosh, some six months later, Bakario Tumitis, son of Morio Tumitis, the Magister of Tyrosh, and the strongest of the rebel lords, met King Oliver in the field. Though the king had proven his skill in arms, Bakario was known to be an excellent duelist, trained in the art of the water dance by Bervosi's swordmasters. The two were evenly matched, but when Oliver had forced Bakario down on the ground, the Tyroshi produced a dagger and stabbed the king through his visor. Secretly, the realm breathed a sigh of relief. Oliver was succeeded by his brother Cameron, who was lifted up on a chair that night by the victorious royal soldiers. Oliver, an unlikely and unloved king, had met a tragic end to his tragic life. The war in the south was now over. Ethan Glover was dead, and Mark Riswell was soon imprisoned and later executed. That just left Taganaro Seldoris of the Northern Marches and Mario Tumitis, the Magister of Tyrosh. Cameron had been one of the few men in the realm to love his brother Oliver, as he loved his entire family. But he had no time to grieve. All rebels needed to be dealt with. Lord Taganero was first. The campaign in the north was a grueling series of sieges, taking place over the course of the next year. Eventually, the castle of Long Lake was successfully stormed, and Lord Taganero was imprisoned, along with his entire family. His castle and lands were given to Oliver Withers, a competent steward and friend of Queen Marjorie, who had hastily married Cameron after the death of Oliver, her third Baratheon husband. Only the Magister of Tyros was still in open rebellion against the throne, feeling secure behind the thick walls of fused black dragonstone. King Cameron sent out a call to all those who specialized in siege warfare, to aid him in the capture of the nigh-impenetrable fortress. Many competent men arrived at his court, including Sir Balan Swan, 
who ended up breaking Tarosius' walls through a shrewd combination of a naval blockade, the use of sappers who burrowed away underneath the walls, and the unprecedented construction of siege towers on top of ships, who proceeded to float alongside Tarosius' smaller seaside walls. Eventually the city was captured, and King Cameron seized the bleeding tower guarding its harbour for himself. The young king now held Myrrh, Tyrosh and Lys as personal fiefdoms, making him one of the most powerful and wealthiest men on the narrow sea. Baratheon rule seemed secure for another generation. That is, if Cameron and Marjorie would produce an heir. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to JJO Gaming, and welcome back to episode uh, 9, I think, of the Dragon Hunt. I mean, uh, we're not no longer the Dragon Hunt, to the Kingdom of the Summer Crown, yes, last episode. Uh, Pacario, Pacario Tumitis murdered my, uh, my older brother, and I am now the new King of the Summer Crown. I'm a strong, skilled fighter, knight, kind. Family person, shy, patient, and chaste. So I'm a, a true knight. I'm uh, married to the sword, basically, and uh, also a nice, uh, nice, kind guy. I love my family. You know, I, uh, I, I'm a pretty okay guy. But that being said, <coughs> uh, I think it was um, Roderick Forrester in, uh, in, the, in the, on the comments of the previous video. He suggested that we uh, try to find this man, Pacario, to meet this and duel him. And I think that's a good idea. I think actually we're gonna. Uh, antagonize him. Oh, we can't antagonize him because we're kind. Wow, I, I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, it makes it, it really does make a lot of sense actually. I uh, shouldn't be able to antagonize anyone just because uh, because I'm a kind man. Um, Lord Paramount Renly, do you want to be my ally? Almost. We can sway this this man probably, right? Renly Baratheon, 38 years old. We should become his ally because he is my uncle. But I think we're also married into each other's family, maybe. Oh, and um, before I forget, another uh, suggestion, I think, also by uh, Roderick Forrester was to uh, was to make Willem the Wayward, Willem Fire, uh, our bastard brother, the oldest son of Robert Baratheon, uh, to le legitimize him, make him a proper Baratheon. And uh, so we have done that, and we have also given him the nickname the Wayward, because uh, Willem has been traveling around. Uh, can we send him on another journey? We can. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, he says yes. Okay, nice. Sure. Okay, Willem. He's uh, he's a traveler. He's now my heir. I think it, it, I think it makes sense because um, right now our uh, second in line uh, is Theo Tyrell, and there's also Lionel Baratheon, who is the king of the Iron Throne, who is uh, who is also our heir. So I think it makes sense to uh, to uh, legitimize uh, Willem the way with, and he also helped us out in the rebellion. Yes. So we are in a very strong position right now. Uh, I think I will just wait for uh, our levies to tick up, and then we can uh, we can go fight some, uh, some smaller wars of conquest. Uh, we also kind of need a better master of laws. I mean, I, I, I like you well enough, Marjorie, but we kind of want to actually fabricate claims. So maybe we should just find somebody. Let's see, um, Mitchell Redford. Who the Redfords? One of the Redfords, John Redford. Yes, the um, the uh, the husband of uh, or the widower. Widow? No, the, um, the widower of Daenerys uh, Stormborn, who was murdered in the last episode by King Edric. Uh, but we can invite the Redford. We, uh, we have no quarrel with the uh, the Redfords, really. So this this guy can come over and become my new Master of Laws. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, if he then can give me some nice claims on the Stepstones. Uh, but we also have uh, some, uh, some counties here to conquer, so I think we will do that as well. Uh, but uh, let's let's hold off on that for a while. We can ask some of our courtiers to leave court. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, bye, bye, everybody. We can imprison some people. The Dowager Queen, my uh, my mother. What did she do? Oh, she's excommunicated. We don't care about that. Leopold Tolhart wants to become Hand of the King. I mean, he can try. Oh yeah, um, that's a good point actually, because right now we have Magister Courtney as my Hand of the King, Courtney Nightwick. But uh, I think I noticed that uh, Joffrey Baratheon. Uh, our loyalist would be a much better uh, hand of the king, and I think he, he deserves it. He was one of the two vessels uh, who didn't revolt against me, one of my two ma major vessels, Joffrey Lannister and uh, Lancel Lannister. So I think uh, I think Joffrey deserves a promotion, you know. So I think uh, I think we will do that, uh, Master Courtney. I think we will make you master of coin. 
Um, yeah, so uh, let's have you resign and let's reassign uh, our boy here. Reassign counselor and the king. You can also give him a knighthood. Yeah, let's do that, why not? 150 prestige, yeah, we can miss that. Right, Sir Joffrey, your brother-in-law Joffrey has proven himself to be a fine warrior. Yeah, not really. <laughs> you have him kneel before you and proceed to tap his shoulders with your sword. Joffrey of the House Lannister, in the name of the warrior, I charge you to be brave. In the name of the father, I charge you to be just. Uh, mother made seven just an honorable. Right, Sir Joffrey, we made him a knight. He's now my hand of the king, Joffrey the Merciless. I think we can... Oh, Oliver, Oliver Withers. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 remember, this, I remember this guy. Uh, we're we gonna make him head of the king. No, we can, we can make him master of coin. That is fine. We uh, we invited this man over from uh, from the reach, and uh, we, we 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 said okay, he, he probably knows my wife. Oh, and also um, before I also forget uh, something else I thought up was to marry off Willem to uh, because I have a Lannister in my court, Joanna Lannister. Yeah, so she is the daughter of uh, Tyrion, I think. I think that is a pretty nice match. Uh, yeah, daughter of Tyrion the Imp. So I married, married her off to my half-brother. I think that makes sense. My half-brother is, of course, currently on his travels again. That is fine. But Paramount Theon of the Iron Islands has once again accepted King Edric of the Iron Throne. Uh, peace of war, I guess. Oh, Balon Greyjoy. Okay, there was somebody at my door for, for a charity or something. But I, but I noticed that our boy Balon Greyjoy has died in suspicious circumstances, which is... I mean, <laughs> he lived way longer than he had any right to do. <laughs> so I guess he finally died. Okay, well, I, I guess Edric Baratheon will be happy about that. Let's see what he does with uh, Theon. This is the Theon Greyjoy. He's, I guess, attractive. He married uh, <laughs> a Yogos Nye woman. The great celebrations that surrounded my coronation concluded a while ago, but the trade and wealth they have brought to Myrrh are still lingering. And, 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 uh, yeah. The great celebrations that surrounded my coronation concluded a while ago, but the trade and wealth they have brought to Myrrh are still lingering. An unexpected consequence of my generosity. Outstanding. Okay, 75 gold and flourishing trade. That is good. That is good news. Uh, should we maybe... Oh yeah, so... Um, I think the consensus in the comments was that we will keep our capital in Myrrh, which I think uh, does make some sense. Uh, it, it was sort of the first city we, we conquered. We landed uh, right next door here in uh, Robert's Landing, so I think it makes sense. Is that the Prince of Pentos? Oh, he died finally. Age 76, man. <laughs> he ruled uh, Pentos for what? Well, not that long, actually. I guess he started quite late, so it's about 30 years. Inherited by B B uh, Protector Bian of Pentos, who is not... Uh, related to... I guess he never got any kids. He did marry the Queen of Novo, Norvos, though. <laughs> so who is this man? Virginion. Is it then... Um, what is the inheritance law? Elective. Ah, okay, I guess this man was elected. Okay, so we have a new Pantoshi leader. Uh, he lost Norvos, I guess. So I think uh, the Death Prince did conquer Norvos earlier on. Uh, but, uh, but he's still quite strong. Is it just Pentos, or does he control... Yeah, so I think he, I think uh, the Tetris Prince conquered Norfos and Lorath, I think. I guess uh, I guess the realm fell apart a little bit. Oh well, to all my subjects, the inheritance of Pentos has been thrown into question, and so a great council must be held to determine who shall inherit the kingdom. We'll shall gather in Pentos, so we can vote for a new sovereign. All right, Queen uh, Lesinia Mirenolis is one of the leading candidates. Josh Mirakis is one of the leading candidates. This is who were you? Mario. It's a different, uh, different uh, random vessel, uh, more or less, I think. Okay, interesting. Let's see who wins. Pentos recently fell into a period of interacting with the Great Council of Nobles being called to determine the heir. Sarella Mirakis has been backed as the heir to the kingdom uh, by this council and has been crowned as queen. All right, Sarella Mirakis, are you the former wife of uh, of, the, of the Tethered Prince? No, I don't think so. Queen, new queen of Pentos, alrighty. Perhaps I should use my extensive military knowledge uh, to impress Lord Paramount Bentley into liking me more. Yeah, we can do that. He's a tough soldier, right? Yep, he likes me a little bit. Very nice. Um, history is a subject that has always fascinated you, and you have spent the last few weeks studying the campaigns of the Valyrian Freehold. There are many lessons to be learned from the conquest against the old Giscari Empire. I, I, can, I can do some military strategy, but I was kind of thinking of maybe switching my focus around a little bit. We can't do that quite yet, but I really need kids, so <laughs> I kind of feel like switching to uh, family focus. Or maybe seduction focus to get rid of Chaste. I think that is probably not a bad idea. 
<laughs> so uh, I think I will do that as soon as I'm able to. But in the meantime, we can do something else. Let's see. Um, I think we were going to conquer some of these countries over here. We have Northfields, which is a ruin, apparently. We have Golden Bridge. We can attack Golden Bridge. Sure. Horse specialization. My woman. Dragon Hunt is out to get you. And uh, our boy Cameron wants to prove himself a little bit, although he's not quite as insecure as his uh, younger brother was. Uh, Sir Alexander, good luck. He wants to be a sworn brother of the Night's Watch. Uh, he's a skilled commander, direct leader. Uh, he wants to replace Howland Reed as Master of Arms, but he wants to join the Night's Watch. That, that is fine, man. It's an honorable course of action for any man. I think that's what Cameron would think. He's kind of uh, the uh, the ultimate knight, right? Okay, it's time to uh, do what knights do best. And uh, have Balon Swan on my left flank, Marwin on my right. It's only two people. <laughs> only two, uh, two garrison. Two people in the garrison. Wow. <laughs> my woman. We didn't really prove uh, ourselves uh, militarily, but hey. And force demands. She is now my vessel. I think we're just going to keep going with this. Uh, Northfields. I think we can, we can probably afford to take on a, a few at a time. Uh, can we attack Kohor? Liberation of Kohor. Uh, practice despicable. Uh, custom of slavery. What is the difference between emancipation and liberation? Grindelwald, King Cameron. Uh, King Cameron takes occupied territory and becomes the new mistress of Kohor. I didn't know that was a thing. Can we do that in uh, Volantis as well? That would be uh, pretty amazing. No, I guess not. What about Pentos? We can do emancipation, but not liberation in Pentos. Okay, I don't know how that works. How strange. Okay. But I'm pretty sure. No, we, of course, we, uh, we already emancipated Valentin, so they don't have slavery. I don't know if Pento... Yeah, Pentos does have slavery, but I guess we can't conquer them. Hmm. Interesting. Should we... Should we subjugate Kohor? Is that something we should do? Hmm. It will make the borders look quite ugly. <laughs> but do I care? Not really, I guess. How many troops do we have? 7k. Mr. and I, Serene, Mistress, Serena, the open-handed. Sympathy for Western, Westerosi gods. I guess we could do it. We could do it. Yeah, I think it's time for the newly united dragon hunt to find a common enemy. I think that makes sense. Don't make the borders look hideous. But <laughs> Can we attack Norvos as well in this way? No, just emancipation. Hmm. I don't know what the liberation Casus Bella is then. Mm, fatal to 7 plus 5%. Is she... Um, no. I don't really understand how this works. Or why this works. But we're going we're gonna to take advantage of it anyway. Liberation of Kohor. Let's do it. Let's do it, boys. Uh, we have received for it Archon Grolio. Let's let them to join a coalition in defense of Kohor. The Archon of Lorath. All right. That is fine. We can deal with that. Uh, your half-brother, Prince Willem, recently sent word from Bravos that he, where he's just arrived on his tour. He says he's currently enjoying the hospitality of Sea Lord Ordello Prestain and will be the guest of honor at an upcoming feast. We have um, a cordial relation with uh, Bravos. They are anti-slavery, the same as us. They funded uh, Robert Bratian, my uh, father. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about it if he was my father or grandfather, but I guess he was my father. Um, so uh, we have a cordial relation with Bravos, so I think... Uh, Willem uh, will have a good uh, visit there. We don't hate them. Uh, Sun Spear trial by combat. Uh, they managed the trial. Slain by Oberyn Martell. Oberyn Martell has killed a lot of people, man. The Red Viper. Six kills, all in trials by combat, yeah. Trial by combat, trial by combat. He killed six people in... Uh, five people in trial by combat. Pretty impressive, uh, Oberyn. We, uh, we wish to emulate you. Yeah, we, uh, we, we idolize uh, Oberyn Martell a little bit, I think. Because he is a strong warrior, as are we. Hello. No, no, I think we are probably stronger than him. In fit condition, skilled fighter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Randy, why don't you join me in this war? Talk in private. We, we, would, we wouldn't mind being your ally. Uh, dot, 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 <laughs> because I'm shy. I think these days have really helped me getting Renly to know and appreciate me better. We've passed most of our time in my keep discussing the most disparate topics. Just hope nobody thinks worse of you for your visit. Chased. <laughs> or um, I could say nothing and be shy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Softened. 24k. All right. Let's lead this army. Let's have Marwin. 
I don't want uh, this guy in my uh, in my flank. Let's have Randall Mandalay in my flank. Uh, let's head, head down to Kohor and uh, start besieging some of their land. Oh, she's got an army in Tyrosh. Okay, <laughs> I think we should go after that one. Actually, I think that makes sense because um, we do have the boats for it, and uh, we could use the battle war score. Um, fleet levies. Uh, why don't you gather in uh, Mur? Everybody, we can muster. All right, excellent news. A little bit of money we can use it because we're raising boats, and boats are expensive as hell. <laughs> Uh, spirited charge will break any line. Solid rock breaks the best steel. No spirited charge, right? You're an aggressive leader. That makes sense. To your house proud, Willem. He arrived in uh, Vadadan, uh, where he's enjoying the hospitality of Lady Gazea Zo Yanzek. Where are you, Yunkai? The harpy. Uh, so she is down here in Yunkai. All right. To your house proud, Willem. Uh, enjoy yourself, my man. Yeah, we can use your expertise once you return. Your world-wise expertise. Uh, let's head down to Tyrosh with our big army. There we go. Prepare to die, Teldoris. Come. Yes, let's do it. No match for my might. I forcefully overwhelmed his offensive stance. Almost got him. A fair fight. My wife's pregnant. Oh my god, we finally impregnated Marjorie at age 34. Let's hope she bears me a clever, quick, strong, attractive son. That would be pretty amazing. All right, that's 30% war score. Uh, I think we will head up north here since we have these uh, these ships. Over the past few months, your half-brother Prince Willem appears to have acquired a taste for the Giscari ways. After touring many cities and foreign courts, he has arrived at the court of King Gresden VII in New Guise. Willem decided he liked life there and has sent word that he will be staying there indefinitely. All right. Joanna Lannister joins Gresden the back. Okay, so he's in, in New Guise, my, uh, my brother. I mean, that's fine if you want. I guess you don't want to join me at court. No, you do. Okay. You can stay in New Geese for now, brother. If you want. You can uh, look at the Great Pyramid. Where is it? Uh, Eastern Shipyard. Is it not here? The New Pyramid. I guess it's in Old Geese, probably. The Great Pyramid. Yeah, well, maybe not. Yeah, it is there, but it's not like a wonder or something. All right. Well, uh, that's fine, uh, my guy. If you want to uh, stay in Geese for a little while, we might want to uh, ask him to, back to come back to court later. But I think Marjorie is pregnant now, so hopefully we will have a successor soon to our, uh, our little kingdom. Uh, it's a duty. Come on, man. You're fighting a war finally again. Uh, this is oh, this is Laura. We will charge them. We'll charge them. There we go. 4,000. Uh, let's chase them down as well. We want to get rid of these Loretti. Uh, my prisoner is complaining about his dark cell. Oh, let him rot. Let him rot. Prepare to die, Bariali scum. That's right, run back to Loreth. This is a pretty <laughs> a pretty adventurous war. Uh, I will buy her something nice. Yeah, let's do that. What will actually happen when we win this war? Takes occupied territory, become the new mistress of Kohor. Okay, so we will we will take Kohor. So I think we should occupy the city of Kohor itself then. Uh, let's talk strategy. In my army camp, that is fine. Can we storm Kohor? Let's see. Maybe. We shouldn't, though. Let's have... Uh, we have a siege leader, right? Marwin. Why don't you lead the army right now, uh, my my, uh, my brother? Bayon Swan can be in here, and then it will be me. That will help to siege down Kohor quite quickly. Uh, winter is coming. Olissa Baratheon. Okay, this is my new heir. She's a girl. That's a bit of a shame. <laughs> I would have preferred a boy, but at least uh, we have a new heir. Adam Gretian has had something added to their treasury. Did he win his war already? No, not quite. What are you fighting, actually, still? King Aegon's... Oh, yeah, right, Aegon Targaryen. Aegon Targaryen's invasion. I guess he didn't win yet. That's impressive, man. Usually he dies quite fast. Uh, Lord, Mel but nobody is joining him, so he will be dead eventually. I don't care. Let's attack Cohort, though. There's no one of value here, but we did capture Cohort. Should we just take it? I don't really want to grab... Do I? Don't I? I kind of want to grab some more land here. Just give it to Westerosis. I think that is a decent idea. Because once, uh, because when whatever you whatever we grab, we will take. Liberation revolt of uh, Lees. Okay, I guess we'll take one more county. Uh, rough terrain mountain expert. Let's do it. Take one more county and then just take then just uh, 
then, then just sort of sort of accept our uh, our victory because uh, we have a big slave revolt going on, a big Lysini liberation revolt, another one, and force demands. Bye bye. <laughs> we should have the high lordship of Kohor, kingdom of Kohor. Did we take Kohor itself? We should have. We did. That's great. What uh, do, do we have any specific uh, fur hunting stations? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, my prisoner lady Serenai Remnos is complaining. Ah, we can be merciful. We will ransom you off, actually. Or should we just take her, her land? Can we? Oh, you might as well call her for trial, right? Let's head down to, uh, to Lys. And deal with that revolt. And also let's start to distribute some of our newly gained territory. Oh yeah, we were... Um, another good point by... I forget who, but we should give Willem Fire some land. Although I guess he abandoned us. <laughs> so maybe we shouldn't give him any land. What do you guys think? Well, I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to do... Either not give him land or give him land. Let's see. Uh, this one... Let's first just distribute whatever we have to loyal Westerosi sub-vessels. Uh, the city of Kohor. We conquered it. My <laughs> new borders look hideous, but hey. <laughs> uh, what about the new Valyrian Empire? I guess we can't um, we can't form it anytime soon. I guess we need the 80%, right? Uh, I want to check titles. We can say Valyria. Kingdom of Valyria. Titular Kingdom of Valyria. We can't do that. New Valyria. I want to, I guess, the Empire. New Valyria. Here it is. Uh, we need oh we need fifty one percent only. Okay, we're not that far off. Hmm. Something to think about. Um, Cohort though, who will we give it to? I think we can we can just give it to our best best brother Willem. My guy, please uh, return to my uh, court. We have we have a present present for you, my man. Uh, the Joffrey shall, shall interrogate him. Uh, he made a strong case. Uh, I hereby exile you from the Summer Crown. Sure, we can exile you. Uh, we are dealing with this revolt in Lease, though. Thank you. Welcome back, Willem. We have a very nice present for you, if I do say so myself, which is the Lordship of Kohor and the High Lordship of Kohor. Here you go. Lord Willem, the wayward of Kohor. I think I think it, it suits him. He is a traveler, and he's very far away from uh, from the capital in Mur right now, so we are trusting him a great deal here. Um, we can also give this southern duchy to somebody. Uh, ideally a Westerosi. Balon Swan. Oh yeah, Balon Swan has helped us out quite a bit. Uh, we can give it to him. Or does he... Will he... Does he have any kids? Yeah, he has some kids. So it will not go to uh, to the Lord of Red Watch, probably. Alright, yes, my man. Uh, we can have... We can give you some... A nice lordship. Southern Forest. Here you go. Balon Swan of the Southern Forest. Okay, who else do we have? We have some, some, some land here. Um... Can we call you for trial? Mm, or you're not imprisoned by me. We have Arnoy. We can't create it quite yet. We can give this county to somebody. We can do that. Do you have any unlanded people still? Michael Redford? Are you the heir to something? Mm, not really. No, no, no. We can give you something. Michael, my guy. We will give you the Lordship of Dagger Lake. Here you go. Uh, that gives us, that, that puts us back under the right main limit. Let's also just create these other duchies and create some loyalists here. Uh, this woman or this woman. It's all, it's all women, I guess. That's uh, odd. Uh, Lord Taika of Darkbridge. We have some, uh, we have a nice lordship for you. Here you go. High lordship of Darkwater. And then we have the forests of Kohor here in the north, which we will create as well. This man has had his castle burned down. So I think he will be extra grateful if we give him uh, the Lordship, unless we have another genius here somewhere. Not really. Ordello, Ordello Raget. Uh, just to compensate you for your uh, horrible uh, experiences of having your castle burned down to have a Lordship. All right. <laughs> that was a quick and easy war and uh, gave us a lot, of, a lot of territory, although it did make our borders look hideous. So we will do something about that as soon as we can. Um, yeah, we cannot, cannot really do anything about these ruins, right? Or can we? Arnoy. We can conquer this little county. Um, I guess we can probably settle those. We need a lot of money. We might uh, we might do that at some point. Okay, let's first deal with these Lycini though. Taroshi have also risen in revolt. Man. 
Worrisome, indeed. Can we already become allies with Renly? Okay, great. Oh man, we really need your help here. <laughs> We're really being assaulted by everybody. Come in, come in here. Come in here, please. Can we also um, have an aggression pact? No, I guess not. Renly, we need your help. Uh, as soon as you can help us, my, my guy. I think we can still handle the uh, Lord of Lees here. Um, Lord Master Bindemir of Deep Forest has provided me with proof that Baron Swan has been viciously, viciously slandering me. Uh, I keep this information to myself. I think he will be. I love I lovely. I said, do the commander myself. That's right, coward. Run back to all realm provinces. <laughs> Prepare to die, Eros and his scum. Run back. Simply ask him. Okay, we, we grabbed at least this woman. We will execute her. Behead her. And we will offer peace. And behead this man as well. Execute. But will, do we have enough soldiers here to deal with the terrorists? Yeah, I think we probably do, actually. At least if we... Wonderful, okay. Renly wants to join me. I don't know if he has the, the, the men, really, to throw away at... Uh, at uh, Tyrosh. I think we probably have to do this ourselves. Can we hire more uh, vessels somewhere? We can, okay. Yeah, we, we need we need you guys' troops if we want to deal with this uh, these Tyroshi men. <laughs> we really do. So please head over there all the way from the north. <laughs> Tyroshi might win this, actually. Fantasy front team must be removed. No, I want to take sides. We have, we have other things to worry about, man. Strong claim on the High Lordship of the Northern Stepstones. Uh, for 250 gold. We can do that. Have something to conquer after this from uh, Toke Pike. Uh, what is the highlightship of the... Oh, it's just these two counties. Okay. Oh well. Uh, we can continue with the rest of the Stepstones though. That's, uh, that gives us our next target. I think it makes sense that uh, Cameron is sort of back on the warpath. He's not quite as desperate as Robert Baratheon to die. I think we should give him another haircut. Another a good haircut though. Let's, let's give him a beard. Okay, I think we have more more or less enough troops to, to handle the Tyroshi now. At least they, uh, they, they're struggling with my walls, though. The Bleeding Tower is uh, very strong walls. Uh, Marwin and... Uh, we can have our, our rival in the right flank, that is fine. Let's head down to Tyrosh. Use it, okay, we can already claim Bloodstone. Okay, I think I think that's, that does help us, help us out quite a bit. Oh no, we're losing. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Okay, now what? <laughs> can we can we rehire? Uh, we should have waited for those other guys. Ah, uh, but we're still fine, I think. We're still fine. We can just do another round like that. Whilst holding holding court, a group of Yogos Nai warriors was presented to you. Their leader expresses the, expressed the admiration they had for you and presented you as a gift a young Zors stallion, a striped black and white mount that the Yogos Nai around right on the place. Okay, they gave us they gave us a zebra. That's cool. What can we do with it? Ah, it's pretty cool. I ride a Zors, a striped black and white mount that the Yogos Nai ride on the place. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of the, the muscular the muscular zebra that is uh, Game of Thrones uh, lore. That's pretty cool. So we have the Blackfish's armor, Robert's Warhammer. We have kind of a sort of mixture of a bunch of cool shit uh, <laughs> that we can use. Ah, the Zorst that was gifted has grown into a mighty stallion. And due to its ferocity, has been kept in its own stable, lest it kill the horses. The man that tames this beast and rides it into battle would surely earn the respect of lord and peasant alike. Let's try. Let's try to tame it. Oh, you enter the pen where the horse is held and can immediately tell that it does not like your presence. When you approach it, bucks and kicks angrily, causing great pain as it hits you several times. You manage to climb aboard once, but it rears in the air throwing you off. I mean, it was 80% chance of, uh, <laughs> of of taming the horse and we failed. Okay, well, <laughs> that sucks. Oh well, what can you do, eh? Uh, Bilber, whatever. Fine. Uh, some random woman was killed in the reach. That is fine. Let's do another round against these Tyroshi pricks. Yep, we got him this time. All right. Melio. Melio Zokan, you're dead, man. We're gonna murder you. Uh, execute. We had him. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, so now we can lower our troops again. I think our vessels will probably hate us by now, because we, we've been at war for quite some time. No, I guess not. Yeah, I, I, it was a defensive war, I guess. Cool. Uh, let's wait a little bit with uh, while we gain some money. But I think... 
this was a pretty nice thing to do. We conquered Kohor. We have sort of uh, given it in fief to uh, our brother Willem. And let's just say uh, we're going to have Willem with a lot more uh, experience dealing with uh, different cultures than us. Uh, deal uh, rule uh, Kohor like uh, pretty much his own independent uh, fiefdom. We're not going to bother much with uh, with Kohor. We're just going to help them out if they're attacked and uh, that kind of thing. We're going to raise some taxes from them. But uh, Willem, uh, Willem can handle uh, can handle himself, my half brother. Father, father calls Alyssa, pulling my arm, pleading to play with her and her latest toy, completely oblivious to all the important work I'm in the middle of. Yet, how could I say no to such a sweet, innocent exuberance? Ah, I'm kind, right? What is it, Alyssa? What can I do for you? Let's actually switch to uh, family focus. I know we almost got the strategist trade, but uh, I uh, I really want this this son, so <laughs> we're gonna we're just gonna do that. A few days ago, you noticed an intriguing woman at your court. Most of the time, she sat quietly and did not draw any attention to herself. However, you could tell she was listen she was listening very intently to the conversation, and that nothing escaped her watchful eyes. Perhaps you can find a use for her talents. Ellen I of Mur. The Stormlander woman. Master schemer, authoritative, slotful, gregarious kind. I have the perfect job for you. Can we replace my mom as Master of Whisperers? I mean, that's fine, I think. My mom is pretty terrible at being uh, a spy master. Sure, sure, you can be a Master of Whisperers. Ah, okay, Aegon the Conqueror was... Uh, Aegon the Conqueror, Aegon the uh, Usurper has been uh, captured again. He died of scurvy, I guess. Is he going to be executed? Let's see. I've been corresponding with my sister Jaina and always make sure to see her whenever I get the chance. It's a harsh world and family must stick together. Yay. Jaina likes me. Jaina was married to the... Where is he? Oh, she's already on her fourth husband. <laughs> okay. But she was married to Michael. King uh, King Michael of the Iron Throne. But, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Do you want to join me in my court? You do. Okay. Oh, why don't you come over here? She's uh, matrilineally married to Sir Orson. The Archer Queen Lysa Tully has been a Leon Able servant. Uh, yeah, we, we can give her something, I guess. No, that, no, we're not going to give her anything. We need the money. We need the money, man. Welcome, uh, twin sister. Welcome back. My legion, I'm pleased to report the success of my mission to Robert's Landing. The majority of the population have been converted to the faith of the Seventh Faith. Excellent. Let's now do Tyrosh next. We want to convert as many of these guys as, prof as possible to the faith of the Seventh, because also it will just lower revolt risk. We've been struggling with a lot of revolts recently. Um, yeah, so we, we, we're getting there. We're, uh, we're converting faith to Faith of the Seven uh, quite fast now. Um, let's continue with the uh, claims. I think we can just use our vessels for these wars, right? Let's just do that. Claim the Northern Stepstones. Can we claim the other stuff as well? I think we'll just do Bloodstone as well immediately. Claim Bloodstone. Uh, let's raise our uh, boats and our armies. Uh, yep. Uh, let's just raise all our vessel levies. Our vessels can handle this quite easily, I think. Oh, we can. We have already converted Tyros. That is amazing, actually. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so we, we we can now continue to lease, I guess. <laughs> Suddenly the conversion is going rather fast. I guess the yeah, it's 100 percent. The um, the, uh, the 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 the, the Fatal Seven. That's cool. That's cool. It makes some sense, I guess. That. Uh, Seeing the success of uh, the, of the uh, the Kingdom of the Summer Crown, that uh, people are uh, people are joining our, our religion. We will deal with these pirate bastards, though. There we go, 100%. Thank you. Uh, swear fealty to me? No, no, no. I will take it for myself. Give me, give me this uh, this castle, my guy. Um, we will also capture the Island of Bloodstone, which is the main island of the Stepstones, I believe. Just intercept these 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 rebels. Oh, my wife is pregnant again. That's great. Man, we almost didn't win that that battle. And the, the amphibious landings in this game are very bad. We should have landed to another uh, uh, next next door in another, on another, uh, on another island. Thank you. Uh, I can swear fealty to me, or I will take it for myself. I'll take it for myself. I want bloodstone for myself, man. I want to give it to. Uh, to an actual loyalist, not just a random pirate. Um, can we... Yeah, we can move this guy to Lees. Let's do that. Okay, so we captured some of the stepstones. We captured the skulls. We should, I, I guess, also just... Do you want to... Can we declare war on you? Yeah, the Zero, the zero War. Let's just do that immediately. 
just want to take advantage of the, uh, the goodwill I have with my vessels right now. I think that makes sense. Um, we should give the, the island of Bloodstone out to somebody though. Howland Reed. My boy Howland Reed. No, we still don't want to give, it, give him anything. He's 58 years old though. <laughs> He's getting somewhere. We have Michael of Dagger Lake. Michael Redford. Let's just see who is available in the realm. Who is my religion. Do we have any family members that we can give this to? The new husband of uh, of my twin sister. I think that makes sense. Sir Orson. Yeah, yeah, we will give you, uh, we will give you the bloodstones, man. I can raise you to nobility first, actually. Well, we don't need to. We can just give you the bloodstones. You will, you will increase your nobility immediately. Tremble, great. We will also give you the high lordship later. We want one strong lord in the stepstones to deal with all these pirates. We'll buy you something nice, Marjorie. I hope you give me a son, though. That would be nice. I mean, a daughter is fine too, I guess. Robert Baratheon. You have a new Robert Baratheon. Okay, he doesn't have any inheritable traits. So, well, he's still a son. We could call him Robert. Yeah, we have never had a Robert in a while. Okay, finally we achieved our ambition to get a son. Uh, we can now have five children, sure. <laughs> I want more kids. I want to be like my uh, my uh, my father, Robert. Uh, after a long council meeting, my head is filled with the latest expense reports. I let out a sigh, a small feeling of defeat building up in me. But Marjorie interrupts my thoughts. I don't know if, it's, if it matters to you, my lord, but many are grateful for the way you are handling the surplus of men and women here in the castle. I simply enjoy everyone's company, my dear Marjorie. I can gain, uh, I can gain charitable. Oh, wife, you are, uh, you are all important to me as all. Well. Ah, I simply enjoy everyone's company. Charitable, that's fine. That's good. I think that, that fits his character quite well. All right, we conquered another one of the stepstones. Thank you. Um, yeah, we will, we will give the high lordship to uh, Orson, my guy. Uh, I have the high lordship of the northern stepstones. Here you go. Here you go. Defend the stepstones for me. Protect the trade. Going through there, I think we will we will profit from it quite a bit because we control all the free cities. So I think uh, having a way to deal with all these pirates uh, would be uh, very profitable for the kingdom of the Summer Crown. Um, I think it's about time to end the episode, right? Yeah, we, we can about end. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so this episode, we uh, conquered Kohor. Uh, we also managed to get a son and heir from our lady wife, Marjorie. We have uh, welcomed back our uh, bastard brother, Willem uh, the Wayward, of uh, the oldest son of Robertian, and we've actually given him a lordship. He's uh, entertained us with many tales of the uh, faraway lands of, uh, of Essos. Uh, Cameron the Blessed has expanded the realm by uh, twofold and has also started to conquer some of the stepstones, which we, which we will continue doing in the next episode. Um, so in the meantime, I think uh, very much. Th thank you guys. So in the meantime, thank you guys uh, very much for watching. Uh, we will see uh, how far we take this. I think uh, I still want to grab the rest of the stepstones and ideally I would also want to grab sort of Volantis completely so that would probably need me, mean we need a um, an ambition to expand the realm so let's see if we uh, we are able to get that ambition let's see uh, how long the Baratheons of the Summer Crown will uh, rule in Essos let's see if we are able to keep the Baratheons on the Iron Throne as well or maybe even inherit the Iron Throne and uh, thank you guys very much for watching thank you guys also for all the input this series it's been uh, a lot of fun listening to the uh, suggestions that you guys all have and uh, you know uh, i have a discord check that out uh, some other links in the description as well to all the socials and stuff uh thank you guys very much for watching once more and uh, see you next episode bye bye